What's going on my dudes? So this is going to be the first bait builders vlog that we're gonna do. I'm not too sure exactly what these are gonna turn into, but for now I figured since I started doing baits full time that um, a lot of you make baits and maybe wanna take your baits full time. So I'll just bring you along with me every day. Well, I should correct myself. I don't do baits full time. Three days a week during the work week I do baits. Two days a week I still work um, at my trucking company. But I consider it full time because I work on the weekends too doing baits. So I could bring you guys along and show you what I do on a regular basis and just let you see what all goes into it. So hope you guys enjoy and uh, don't forget to like this video boys. <laughs> All right, so today we're painting. I don't know what exactly yet. I got all these to do. Some of them I have started on. If I could not put a shadow on them. Got some black perches right there. You probably can't really see it too well. I'm working on some white belly perches. Uh, I got these guys going, some lemon heads. So, I got some stuff to do, still gotta determine. I painted four blanks, two shaken wakes and two sinuous gliders, yellow. Same thing, four of those green and four orange. Not sure where we're gonna go with those, but sometimes I like to just get a base coat put down and then the ideas come as I go and it usually ends up working out pretty well. Um, so I'm gonna get things cleaned up, get the spray, the airbrushes cleaned up, and then we're gonna just start ripping away. So we got the airbrushes cleaned, lubed, wiped down, all that good stuff. So we shouldn't have spit and spatter. So now we need to determine what we're going to paint, which is the hard part. I think I'm going to start with glitter oranges up top. Um, I'll show you what my... I ain't ashamed to show you that I use some inspiration at times, because I do, very often. My inspiration for these baits is going to be this bait right here by Joe Peterson. The thing is freaking dirty. So that's what them guys up top are. They're actually... Let me grab one. They're actually dyed epoxy. You can't really tell because they're scuffed, so the paint will adhere to them, but they're dyed epoxy with glitter mixed in as well. Basically, so I was able to do my two base coats of epoxy after sealing it with my dyed uh, resin, dyed orange, and then I don't have to do a base coat of orange, and it's also glittery and looks different than anyone else's base coats basically because it's got almost like an oily wavy look in it. Um, I'll pop a picture up of one I've done when I did the base coats and they hadn't been scuffed yet. So that's what we're going to do with those. So the first thing, Joe did painted bars with some sponge painting, gold over the sponge painting, nothing over the bars, but I think, I think I'm going to go with bars and sponge painting with gold over all of it and then go from there so let's do it
Now we got all of the black bars painted on, so the next step is the sponge painting. I'm not looking forward to this part, at least at what time? 9.45 in the morning, because I typically like to do the sponge painting in the afternoon when I have been able to have a beer or two to steady the freaking shake out. Coffee's not helping none. But, I'm gonna mix up my black, um, get my sponges ready, and then we're gonna go sponge painting these. my dudes sorry don't mind my uh, dehumidifier but uh, we got the sponge painting done on those so we're gonna run to Turkey Hill quick and get some red wool and then then we're moving on to the next bait I'm not doing the fins and gills on all of these right now because I typically do them all together like I'll get all my patterns done on all of the baits back there actually I do like all the bellies because I don't like to get overspray on the belly so I do them first then all the bodies then I will do all the details on the bodies, like um, bars or sponge painting or anything like that. And then the last step, I go back in and I do the fins and gills on everything. Sometimes it's tedious, so I've been throwing in some fins and gills on some bait side finish, like the pike ones in the middle, just so I don't have to sit there at the end and do, well, that's like 105 baits there, do 210 fins and 210 gills, because that's just my fingers like, mm -hmm. It's literally stuck by the time I'm done doing that many in like two days. So we're going to run to the gas station and then we'll be ball at it. Ah, the old red ball. Focus, you little guy. Doesn't help with the old motivate or the old blood pressure none. But does help with the motivation factor. Well, it doesn't help with my shaky hands, neither. Whew, so, we're gonna get back here, and then... What are we doing? I don't know. I gotta find which baits we're getting into next. Um, I got... What do I got left? I think I have some whites left, and some grays. Not grays, more of a silver. And then, uh, yeah. I'm gonna go fishing tomorrow, hopefully. But we'll see. Let's get back over. I don't know if I showed you guys this yet or not, but this is my new shop setup. Basically before, as I'm sure you guys know, if you spray baits in your own home, it gets everywhere. So what I did was I put, separated my room. Sorry, it might be a little dark in here. Got some racks, editing all that good stuff. My epoxy station. And then I built, I built this uh, paint booth kind of thing. Basically, well, it has three fans in it because the first two, let me turn this dehumidifier off. The first two that I put in there, I didn't do enough research and they weren't powerful enough. So the first one was probably 300 CFM, I think is what they call it, I forget. And then the next one was a 2600. Um, and then I had a little one from a smaller paint booth I had before that I put in. So now she sucks the stuff out real good. I also just got a big dehumidifier that I soundproofed. It's not completely soundproof, but before I did what I did, which is basically build a box and put a whole bunch of cardboard boxes on the inside to absorb the sound. It'd rattle a house and you wouldn't be able to hear anything. So I did that and uh, it's quiet now. So it, I definitely need more room, want more room, but for the time being, this is what I got until we move houses and I can put a nice pull bar and shop up. So yeah, next we're going to, 
let's see. I got wall eyes need sponge painted. I got orange, yellow, and greens that need patterns. I got five gold with white belly diving rises. I gotta figure out what I wanna do over the gold. Three pinks, two silver eight inch gliders. And uh, that's about it. That's what I gotta get done yet. Then fins and gills, so. We're gonna do, hell, I don't know. I guess on the yellow, greens, and oranges, we're gonna do some sponge painting instead of a paint pattern on those to begin with. So, I'm gonna get those ready, we're gonna jump right in. All right, my dudes, we got the sponge painting done on the green, orange, and yellow. The yellow sponge painting didn't look how I like because I sprayed the, that was the only color I sprayed that wasn't pearlescent. So I sprayed pearl white over top of it to give it that pearl look, just a little light misting of it. And sometimes when you do that, or at least I've found when I do that, when I go and sponge paint them with the Wicked Black, it like pulls in and doesn't look good. So I'm gonna go a different way with it. I still sponge painting all of them because I'm gonna do some kind of layering effect. I put, I took my Wicked Burnt Ember and I put some of my, if I can get this thing to show ya. Uh, hello, awkward. Woods and Water Taxidermy Paint. This is more of a rust color. I mixed it with the Burnt Ember to get, I forget what, what color it is. I used to have a color just like the one that I made uh, but I haven't been able to find it. So I made it. I'm gonna do a light misting over the sponge painting and down, roll it down into the body. And then I'm gonna go back in with black over top of the sponge painting, uh, transparent, nice and just layer it. And then lastly, we're gonna go back in and do gold scales over top of all of that. And I think it's gonna look sweet. So I'll get back with you guys when I get this, the gun loaded up. <laughs> We got this part done. If I can get it to focus, getting a little better at it. Come on, nah. Anyways, you can see what I'm talking about. We got that. Now we're gonna do the. If I can find it, the gold pearlescent scales over top, and then. And these are ready for fins and gills. A little bit of fading in the gills into the head when I do them and uh, they'll be done. Let's get to it. Dope. I'm kind of glad that I ended up having to do this because I like that you can't really see it in here Even though I'm trying to get it so you can but uh, it's not completely dark on the back like you could see the sponge still through it like a layer Then the light black and red ish color then the gold scales <sighs> looks freaking sick What's up my dudes? We are quickly running to the store. We finished all that sponge painting on those, what was it, like 12 or 14 baits. And, geez, that's bright. I look like an angel. And we also finished all the gold scales. So we're gonna be, still have some patterns to do on other baits, but I'm kind of uh, spent on pattern painting for the day. I'll be back with y'all shortly. Check out how crazy my freaking puppy gets when you get home. 
She almost knocks the freaking kennel down. There's my fat doggy. <laughs> Hi, fat doggy. That's Jeb. Settle, Jeb. Now this is my crazy freaking animal. No balls. Don't knock the crate down. Don't knock it down. All right, my dudes. It is only what? Well, it's only two o'clock, but I got some editing to do. I got a how to make stencils video. I got to finish up and a few other edits. I got to work, start working on. So we're gonna call it here. We got a good bit done. We're about, I'd say about three quarters way done, if not more, for the show baits. And then it's a whole bunch of epoxying. I'm gonna show you all how I go about epoxying and the procedures I do because I've epoxied a ton of different ways, whether it be epoxying, letting it dry, sanding it down, epoxying again, which is a pain in the butt and you should not need to do all that. And then the other ways that I do it now that save time and are also even more so, um, they adhere better to each other and make your baits last longer. They don't peel apart. Epoxy's not coming off, all that good stuff. So we're going to get back to that here in a little bit. And thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Slap that like button if you did enjoy this video. Sorry that it was kind of me. I mean, I tried my best. I'm still getting into the whole vlogging stuff thing figuring out what to do camera angles all that good stuff but thanks for watching boys and i'll see you next time peace oh and if you guys don't subscribe and like this video you'll be cursed with eight months with no fish subscribe like it stay tuned see you boys next time thanks for watching Bye.